Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at cellular respiration, specifically the Krebs cycle. If you're new here, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and turn your notifications on because I will be posting a new video every Thursday, every week. Now, let's get into it. If you haven't already watched the glycolysis video that precedes this, make sure to go click on that video now and watch that before you start watching the Krebs cycle video. Right, let's pick up where we left off from our previous video at the end of glycolysis. So to refresh your memory, glycolysis is the process where we are taking a glucose molecule and we are trying to access all the hydrogens that are attached to that glucose molecule. The hydrogens are going to provide us with the energy that we need in order to make ATP. So from glycolysis, we go into the next cycle, which is referred to as the Krebs cycle. Now, the Krebs cycle's purpose is to harvest these hydrogen molecules that we've been looking for. And the way we do that is we essentially take our compound that we make at the end of glycolysis and we slowly but surely pull off and break off the hydrogens and we harvest them. It's almost like we collect them in a little basket. Once we've collected all those hydrogens, we are going to move into the final stage of cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. And that is where we're going to use our hydrogens that we have harvested and we're going to form ATP using the energy that the hydrogen is providing. Now, it's at this point that if you are not so sure what's going on, it's important to go back and look at the glycolysis video before this. So picking up where we left off, at the end of glycolysis, you have two pyruvic acids. Now, that is because there's no oxygen present. But if there is oxygen present, then we need to take those pyruvic acids and we turn them into something called acetyl. Now, acetyl has two carbon molecules. As we can see here, the acetyl is represented by the two pink round ball structures. Now, acetyl needs to have a little bit of help. It needs to speed up the reactions. And so who comes and helps? Coenzyme A, which in this picture is represented by the blue rectangle. So now we have a substance called acetyl coenzyme A. And now this is where the Krebs cycle begins. So we have collected, think of a coenzyme A as like a wheelbarrow. We've collected our acetyl and now we're going to move it and deliver it to the Krebs cycle so we can begin. Now, two things happen here at the beginning of the Krebs cycle. As acetyl coenzyme A enters into the mitochondria, remember, glycolysis takes place in the cytosol. That's the cytoplasm that sits around the mitochondria. Now we're moving into the mitochondria. Two things happen. The first thing that happens is our acetyl breaks off, and we're now left with a two-carbon structure, which is represented here. Now, the coenzyme that delivered it it is going to drop it off and it's going to leave and it's going to go back to another glycolysis reaction and it is going to pick up another acetyl, drop it off and start the whole process again. So think of coenzyme A as a transport mechanism to make it go faster and to speed up this reaction. Otherwise, it would take forever for the acetyl to move from the cytosol into the mitochondria itself. Now, we're left with a two-carbon compound, and just like I've mentioned before, this is sort of like a magic baking show. Um, products appear out of nowhere, and in this simplistic form of the Krebs cycle, I'm not going to explain necessarily in detail where all of these products come from, because we don't need to know that at this level. All we need to know is how certain compounds attach and break down. So, what I mean by that is this two-carbon compound is joined by a four carbon compound. And what happens is they attach to one another and they then form a six carbon compound. Now this six carbon compound is where the magic is going to start taking place. We are now going to start breaking down this six carbon compound. Each one of those circles represents a carbon. Uh, it is not glucose. It's important for me to point that out, even though it has the same carbon number. And what we're going to do now is we finally got a molecule that we can harvest hydrogens. Because remember, that's the point of the Krebs cycle. We want all the little hydrogens that are attached to each one of those ball structures. Remember, we can't see them in the diagrams that I'm using now. So what happens is this. Our six carbon compound is going to break down. And when it breaks down, it's going to lose a few things along the way. 
The first thing it is going to lose is it's going to lose a carbon. And the carbon that breaks off is going to form carbon dioxide. And that's what we will breathe out. The other thing that it loses and that breaks off, which is really important, hence the harvesting, the hydrogen aspect, is going to be our hydrogen atoms. And so a hydrogen breaks off. And that then leaves us with a five carbon compound. We've lost one of the carbons to carbon dioxide. Now, this process is going to repeat itself one more time. So our five carbon compound is going to lose a carbon. It's going to basically break off and it's going to join with an oxygen, hence why oxygen needs to be present in this process. And we end up with CO2 and we breathe that out. We also end up having a hydrogen break off. And that hydrogen, we're going to speak about what happens to it now soon, is what we want. We want to harvest it. And we're finally left with a four carbon compound once again. And as I mentioned to you earlier, that is where the four carbon came from that we used in the beginning. And so if we arc it over to the beginning of the cycle, we can see where the four carbon joins the two and starts the whole process all over again. But now, here's the important part. What is happening to these hydrogens here that we have harvested? Because if you know anything about hydrogen, you will know that hydrogen does not like to be on its own. It often, when it's on its own, wants to join with other compounds, other atoms. It can cause chemical reactions. And left alone, it may cause a reaction that we don't want. And so I need to introduce you to a very important carrier mechanism, which is our hydrogen carrier. It goes by the name of NAD. And NAD refers to a carrier that's going to pick up a hydrogen and it's going to form a substance called NADH. Now, NADH is actually a little bit similar to coenzyme A. It's going to pick up a substance, in this case hydrogen, and it's going to move it to the final cycle, which is the oxidative phosphorylation. And so what we've done here is we've taken our acetyl, we've broken it down, we've harvested the hydrogens. Remember, that's the point of the Krebs cycle. We want to harvest hydrogens. We've attached our hydrogens to a little buddy, NAD, and NAD is going to look after our hydrogen, make sure hydrogen doesn't do anything that we don't want it to. And it's going to finally deliver it to the very last step, oxidative phosphorylation. And that, the final step, is where we're going to take that hydrogen and we're going to form 32 ATP molecules. Because at this point, we haven't made very much ATP at all. The last phase is the most important phase when making any energy, or should I say transforming any energy. Now, just to also point out some important terminology that may come up in your textbook and in your notes, and I want to unpack it very quickly in this diagram, is the process whereby the hydrogens and the carbon dioxides break off, and they actually have names. And so let's look at, first of all, what do we call it when these carbon molecules break off? And essentially, it's given its name based off of what's happening, and we call it uh, decarboxylized. It means that the carbon has been removed along with an oxygen, hence the name decarboxylized, and we end up having a CO2 molecule being released. The process where the hydrogens are broken off is referred to as dehydrogenized, which it has the word hydrogen in it, is basically when we are removing hydrogens. Remember, we're harvesting the hydrogens. As always, I like to finish off our lessons with a terminology recap. So we spoke about the end of glycolysis producing a pyruvic acid. And only if there is oxygen present will the pyruvic acid go into the sort of in-between stage um, where it formulates a substance called acetyl. Now, acetyl can't move around on its own. And so along comes coenzyme A. Coenzyme A picks up acetyl and it becomes acetyl coenzyme A. I know, very long name. But essentially, the coenzyme is speeding up the reaction and delivering the acetyl. Where is it delivering it to? The mitochondria. Remember, glycolysis takes place in the cytosol. We now want to go into the mitochondria itself. Now, once we're in the mitochondria, we are going to need oxygen to perform the Krebs cycle. So we call this an aerobic reaction.
Now, the next uh, two terminology I mentioned to you was about when we broke off our hydrogens and our carbons. And remember, that's the whole point of this process, to harvest the hydrogens. So when the hydrogens break off of our uh, four and six carbon compound, if you remember through the Krebs cycle, we lost a carbon each time, um, we call that uh, dehydrogenized for losing the hydrogen and decarboxylized for using the carbon dioxide, hence carbon and oxy carbon dioxide. So those are the terms we use for when a hydrogen is pulled off and when a carbon dioxide uh, molecule is pulled off or CO2. Last but not least, we spoke about NAD forming NADH. NAD is a hydrogen carrier because hydrogen is a very mischievous atom. It will go and it will interact with other atoms, other compounds, and sometimes it ruins the chemical reaction that you're trying to perform. And so that's what NAD is used for. It picks up uh, the hydrogen, it looks after it, and it's going to deliver it into the final phase, which is oxidative phosphorylation. And that brings us to the end of the Krebs cycle. The next video is going to focus on oxidative phosphorylation. It's going to be the final part of our cellular respiration series. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, put your notifications on, and leave any comments of any videos you would like to see me do in the future. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.